What's going on, everybody? I'd like to welcome y'all back to Sync Music Mondays. That's right, Sync Music Mondays every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Financial literacy for your music, educating and empowering musicians how to succeed in the music industry with a great focus on sync licensing. We understand that uh, sync licensing is a big thing that artists always want to learn about. So week after week, we appreciate you. Big shout out to all the listeners where we're charting, uh, Lithuania, Nigeria, Italy, all across the globe. Shout out to all the dope musicians. Big up to y'all. And as always, we're going to start off with the word of the day some motivational, inspirational to help you guys get through your week. And this word today, I love it. I live it. You know, I preach it. I teach it. And that is persistence, wears down resistance. I'll say that again. Persistence, wears down resistance. Always having the ability to be able to pursue your dreams, no matter what obstacles may come your way, no matter what challenges, you got to always be able to adapt and overcome. So, you know, don't let the naysayers get to you. People always tell you what you can't do only because they haven't achieved it, right? So it's never done until you do it. So keep that focus, stay persistent. And that is the word of the day. But for today, we have a phenomenal, phenomenal guest in the building. This guy is amazing. He is a boss. He is an entrepreneur. He is what we refer to as a legend in the music licensing space. He's been doing this for Thank so you. long. Brilliant. And we're really just going to dive into it today and really just have a, a great conversation. It is no other than the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Frazier. What's going on, man? <laughs> hey, well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. It's so good to have, it's so good to be here with you and everybody that's here. Um, gosh, you know, um, it is a real pleasure to uh, be able to talk to everybody about sync. And I love what you said about persistence. You know, we were talking a little bit before this about what we were going to talk about today. And we'll get into a lot of stuff, I'm sure. But, mm -hmm. you know, I want to just go off of persistence, because that's one of the things that's really key in sync mm -hmm. is that and I think in so many things, but in sync, you have to be politely persistent when you're reaching out to people, when you're reaching out to whether it's a music supervisor, whether it's a music coordinator who basically works with the music supervisors to help to select and curate music and uh, clear it, or if you're reaching out to other people, like people at a brand or at an ad agency a, or a studio, uh, these people are usually uh, pretty busy. And if it's not for a specific search that they have, or if you have not built a relationship with them, it takes time. It takes time to make those connections and to connect your music to people. And by being persistent and being politely persistent and not giving up, that is a way that you can reach more possibilities for success and more possibilities for getting your music licensed. And in addition to that, um, being persistent will give you the ability to find and research and reach out to people like sync agents and music libraries who can help you to make those connections and help you to get your music out there. So I think persistence is a great way to start off and uh, it should be a byword for everybody who is uh, working in sync. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%, Mark. That, that's definitely a key being able to pursue things. And like you said, politely, because I know there's a lot of uh, musicians, they want to get in the sync. They just don't necessarily know where to start per se. And they kind of, they'll go to LinkedIn, they'll go to these websites, they'll get a mass email list and they're just blasting people. So you really have to be mindful of that. Like you said, just be polite, be respectful with your approach and be intentional too. I think that's a big thing too. Like everything you do, take pride in it, be strategic, be thoughtful you know so definitely without a doubt man you know i um yep i, I kind of gave like a brief overview of you but for the people <laughs> who might not be familiar with you or they've been sleeping under a rock you know can, <laughs> can you can you tell the people in your own words who is mark freeze okay well i've been working in uh, music and technology for uh, most of my life i've been uh, working at, for over a decade in this particular part of the business as a uh, sync licensing agent and also as a event coordinator a um, connector and an educator uh, through my two companies the sync licensing company is called disconic and the 
uh, educational and event company is called Sync Summit, as it's over here, over there. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'll tell you a little bit about how it started. Um, my, uh, my path uh, to Sync really started with a conversation with somebody I've known for 20 years who's a good friend of mine, uh, Matthew Knowles. And for those of you that don't know who Matthew is, uh, that's Beyonce's dad. And he was her manager uh, up until, I want to say, 2009, 2010, around there, I think 2010. Mm -hmm. And um, he is a really smart and really visionary guy in his own right. And he and I, we talk about once a month, and uh, he was telling me about a deal. This was back in 2006. He was telling me about this deal that he did with uh, Beyonce and Samsung, and it had a big campaign behind it from Samsung. It had a customized uh, mobile phone. It had, um, it had, um, let's see what else. It had uh, ringtones and it had a fan club. And I thought to myself, wow, this is really cool because I can see why he did this and why he was putting these parts together. Because when he did that, he didn't just have the deal itself but also you had the power of working with the brand and the advertising mm -hmm. campaign that was alongside the album. And I thought to myself, well, this is going to be the future of the music industry. Artists working to get their music into visual media and into um, advertising. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> while I was doing that, I was working at a venture capital company and I decided after a while, okay, you know what, I really want to get back into music, and I'm going to go all in on music licensing and sync. And um, what I did is I thought, okay, well, I know a couple of music supervisors, but I want to build my network out. So how am I going to do that? Well, I think it'd be really cool if we just uh, got ourselves a little room at So House in New York, which is what we did. And I thought maybe we'd have like 50 people there and we would talk about the industry and we'd call the event Sync Summit. Mm -hmm. And then that would help me to make connections into the licensing world and also um, lead to some collaboration and conversation. Well, that event uh, ended up being over 200 people instead wow. of 50. So wow. it totally blew up. And I thought, okay, well, you know, I actually have a real company here alongside <laughs> the licensing because if people want this, we're going to do more of this. So then we yeah. started developing uh, a blog. We started to develop a community. We started to develop um, more events in Los Angeles and working with partners all over the world. So we do partnerships with events in Asia and events mm. in Europe and Canada and Mexico wow. and South America to basically connect people who make music and people who work with music like publishers and labels and managers with the other side of the industry. And the other side of the industry is everybody that I talked about, music supervisors, studios, ad agencies and brands so that we could help people to learn about how this business actually works, get good information, and then prepare themselves, present themselves, and then persistently, politely um, <laughs> bring their music out for opportunities. So that's mm. been the whole mission of Sync Summit. And on the other side, in the licensing world, um, we work with big labels across the world. We work with individual artists, we work with publishers, and we work with management companies. And what we do is we advocate for our, um, our clients. We mm -hmm. present their music uh, to our network of uh, people in the industry. And uh, in addition to that, um, when we get requests from uh, people in the industry to license music, uh, we do our best to fulfill those requests if we have something that could work for that particular project. Right. So that's what we do in a nutshell. And the last thing I'll say um, is that in 2020, during the pandemic, our business transformed a little bit on the Sync Summit side because mm -hmm. We uh, took everything online because we had to, and uh, we started to do online events, and we started to do online courses, and we built out our community 
to a much bigger presence online than it was before. And that's been going on since 2020. And as the world has opened up, we've kept that online component and courses and uh, our, our online chat show going um, to support the community. But at the same time, we're doing in-person events in Los Angeles in February, and we're doing an in-person event uh, that's uh, devoted to advertising and brands here in New York in mm -hmm. April of 2024. And let's see, the last thing I'm going to say is uh, this year I'm a judge of the uh, Clio Awards, so I'm really deep into ads right now. Awesome. Awesome, man. I'm killing it. <laughs> Thank you. Me, That's man. kind of you, Kyle. Kind yeah. of you. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. It's so awesome. And, you know, you're just a, a wealth of knowledge. And, um, you know, I think uh, one question that, that I have, well, I have a couple for you, but um, sure. the first one is, because you, you've been doing this for so long, I guess a, a great question would be, how has the transition of sync licensing changed from when you first started to where we presently are now today? That is such a good question, and I've got an answer for you. I'll try to uh, I'll try to break it into pieces. I mm -hmm. think the first thing is is um, the impact of technology. I want to talk about that for a second because the way that you utilize technology now is absolutely essential to connecting your music in the right way to the music supervision community, to brands, to studios and agencies. And um, the reason I say this is because when I started in this uh, field, everything was done uh, through phone calls and email, not to say it isn't that way still to a degree, but you know, it wasn't uncommon even 10 years ago, 11 years ago for people to send faxes for their contracts. Mm -hmm. So as we have gone over the past decade or so, what's happened is that, uh, Everything takes place now online. The mm -hmm. uh, conversations are online, whether it's a forum like using a Zoom chat or uh, whether uh, we're DMing each other uh, to uh, go back and forth over the D points of a sync deal right. or whether we're sending out contracts. Everything takes place uh, electronically. What also happens is that uh, the way that people find music is electronic now. You know, people will still go out and find music, you know, going out to live shows and through word of mouth. But because streaming networks are the main way that people consume music, the people that use music for all of the visual media projects, uh, they're on those networks like anyone else as well. Mm -hmm. And um, also, we send music to each other and to people that we're working with electronically. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that if you are doing business in this industry, you have to make sure that your music and your presentation is utilizing some of the important points of technology that people expect. Mm -hmm. And what that means to me is a couple of things. One thing is metadata is super important. This is something that we've created a free guide on for people that want to learn about metadata. But the reason that metadata is so important is that if your metadata is not right inside of your MP3s, when you send it to music supervisors, I will say the majority of us, we will think, okay, this person's not professional and I can't figure out how to get in touch with them and I don't know who owns what. I just don't have the time to work with their music, even mm -hmm. if it's a good piece of music, because we need to have all of that information available electronically, like the not just the title of a song and the recording artist, but also all the writers, mm -hmm. the uh, PRO information, mm -hmm. and... Um, the publishing information alongside the PROs and contact information, phone numbers mm -hmm. and email addresses. All of that is super important because simply put, if we don't see that, um, we can't find you and we can't pay you. And this mm -hmm. is also important outside of sync because search engines and fans won't be able to find you either and they won't be mm -hmm. able to pay you. So right. if you get 
So if you get this metadata the right way, what's going to happen is all the AI tools that we use are going to be able to find your music. When we're looking for music inside of your, uh, inside of, excuse me, inside of like our local database or in a plat online platform like Disco, we're going to be able to find it based on searches that we do for the descriptive tags in your metadata or for what's inside of your lyrics. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at some of the AI systems that are out there, these sorts of things, the search terms and dynamic or not dynamic, but uh, descriptive information like uh, BPM or genre will help uh, those um, search engines and AI to find your music and categorize it properly when we're doing searches. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that I have to say is that, you know, when you utilize metadata correctly and you utilize technology correctly, it can really be your friend. It can really help you to build out um, your connections and your level of professionalism in the industry. So that's one thing that's changed. And it's very important that you really understand that this business happens electronically and you have to use those tools. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. The other things are, one is I consider a bit of a challenge and the other one is really positive. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that's a challenge is that everybody knows what sync licensing is now. Not so many people did in 2013. And because of that, everybody's looking for a sync strategy. Everybody's mm -hmm. looking to get into this business because they've mm -hmm. heard about it by now. And they've mm -hmm. heard about the deals that people have had. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, maybe not necessarily that Beyonce one, but basically they hear, okay, music's in a Super Bowl ad or, and, people make a lot of money with that and they change and their lives get changed. Or, you know, somebody who's working with music libraries and creating instrumentals for them and making a living as a musician doing that. Or, you know, of somebody who's had some success or in your own, in your own world, or you've just heard about, Hey, you know, um, I, I've heard that I can make money in this business. So you've got more people than ever looking to get into this business, which means the music supervisors and all the other people out there are getting more music sent to them than ever. Mm -hmm. So for us, it makes it a little difficult for us to sift through everything. And I hate saying sift through everything, but you've got to see, like, if I showed you my inbox, I don't leave it too crazy, but I get about 500 emails a day and about a hundred of them are related to directly to people sending music and a hundred of them related to work and the rest of them are just some kind of spam or personal stuff. Mark, you said 500 a day. 500 a day. Yeah. And See, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop complaining, man. Cause I get like 500 a month. You <laughs> I wish I was getting 500 a month. Let me tell you, but you know, a lot of them to be fair, a lot of them about, about 150, 200 a day are probably spammy, so they don't oh, really okay. get read. Right. But if we want to just break it down, between 200 and 250 a day, That's depending on what's crazy. going on. Wow. So we, you know, we, a lot of us, a lot of us have to really figure out like, okay, what's important? What's not important? You know, because you've just got so many people like coming in and uh, trying to, uh, trying to get their music heard, trying to get connected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the at the end of the day, that's a challenge, and I want to be realistic about it. That you you know your music will be heard by people if you're persistent. As we went back to okay. the first theme of the day, yes. But it may be the second or third time that you get in touch with a music supervisor that they're going to say, okay, I'm putting this in like my pile of music. I'm going to listen to for the weekend for two hours. Mm -hmm. And then they just go through songs and your song may be put into that pool. Mm -hmm. um, but it may take some time. So you really have to understand these are the conditions that a lot of us are working under, you know, and if you talk yeah. to almost any music supervisor out there, they'll give you a similar story about that. So that's a challenge for everyone. But then I want to talk about the positive side of it. Okay. The positive side is that since 10 years ago, the amount of sync naturally nationally and internationally has 
absolutely exploded. And I'll tell you, there's a few reasons for that. One of them is that um, as we move forward, um, you know, we didn't really have original content uh, on streaming networks uh, until maybe like six, seven, I'd say like seven, eight years ago, right? Mm-hmm. So it, when I started in this business, there wasn't really a streaming network that was serious outside of YouTube. You know, there weren't like big productions being done by original content uh, streaming networks. Now, as, as you know, we've moved forward, we've got, you know, how many? Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, mm-hmm. HBO, HBO Max, Hulu, um, Netflix, of course, mm-hmm. and so many others. And please forgive me if anybody out there belongs to one of the online networks, but there's so many out there. Mm-hmm. And all of those networks are all producing original content. That's on top of what the studios have been doing uh, over you know, their usual business, putting out theatrical releases, putting out TV shows, et cetera. And this transition has meant that because of the, because of the amount of streaming networks that are out there, should have mentioned Showtime too, but all of these streaming networks all need music. They mm-hmm. all need music for all of the stuff that they're putting out on their networks. So that's one thing that's a big positive is that there is – a, a great there are a great deal more opportunities to have your music licensed than mm-hmm. there were 10 years ago and that also goes into ads because we have many 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 more ads than we used to because mm-hmm. we have digital formats and we have um mobile formats that ads are going out to as well as television mm-hmm. and um that I think gives people a lot of possibilities. Now, the other thing, which is really cool, and this really only started during the pandemic, is that international has exploded in terms of the amount of music that's being licensed for original content. In mm-hmm. you know, you see things like Squid Game in Korea. You see all kinds of productions taking place in Latin America and in Europe and in Africa and in, well, everywhere, everywhere except for Antarctica. It's really just exploded, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And a lot of those, a lot of those productions and the advertising that's alongside of them will call for a degree of local music. But at the same time, I have licensed out music for usage in Europe. I've licensed out music for usage uh, in India in Australia, in Latin America. I just did a license last week for a uh, Japanese song to get licensed for a, a uh, Mexican production. Wow. And yeah, so you never know where these deals are going to come from. Mm-hmm. And international has become a huge portion of the business now. And whereas 10 years ago, it wasn't nearly as much. So those are, the, those are some of the big changes. The other change that I'll say is that there are a lot more resources for you to Mm. connect to people, to find out about this industry, and to work on not only your craft from a creative point of view, but also your preparation and your process Mm -hmm. for making sure your music is really at that professional level when you make the connection so that the music supervisor goes, okay, I can trust that I can license music from this person, and I can not tell you how important that part of the equation is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I started out, my main knowledge base was a couple of music supervisors that I had met, you know, and Mm -hmm. I had to, I I had to learn things and I learned pretty quickly, but we didn't have the kind of resources that we do now between, you know, the guild of music supervisors, what we do at sync summit, what you do, uh, a lot of other companies out there, you can look them up that are doing good work. I'm not going to be a uh, advertiser for them, but they're out there. <laughs> yeah, and they and they do good work. I'm not yeah. saying you know, yeah. I'm not saying anything but love. But yeah. you know, it's not my job to advertise them. But they're out there, and you can find yeah. them. Yeah. And 
all of these all of these resources are fantastic for you because they can't take you from zero to a hundred, but they can at mm-hmm. least get you on the road and you'll get to know the difference between, you know, what is a, uh, what is a most favored nation status, for example, um, when mm-hmm. a deal is getting done or what is um, one stop versus easy clear, like all of these sorts of terms, mm-hmm. you know, we, we get deep into all of that and what we do when you, you know, join us for an event or a course or something. But you can find a lot of this information out there, whether it's on our site or on another site. There's a lot of resources, and that's a big difference too. Mm-hmm. So those are the things that I feel are the main elements of change in the past decade. That that's awesome, Mark. And you know, you you brought that man. That was a lot of um, very very just on point. You know, everything that you said in terms of like the trends, how things have changed. Um, you know, I remember cause I had got started in sync in 2007. So right. uh, that was when I first got involved in it. And before then it wasn't even on my radar. Cause I was used to just getting regular record deals, conventionally, right. you know, putting out music, you know, CDs, tape cassettes. So to actually get introduced to this world where you can get a song placed in a television show, you can get it in a film, digital media and get compensated for it where you're getting yep. paid on the front end, getting paid on the back end for publishing. Like it's, it's an amazing space, you know? Yep. And, and like you said, it's changed now because everybody knows about it. So there's an influx of people trying to kick in that door, you know? So yep. I think to your point, like you said, especially for musicians, be creative, try to be as original as possible. You know, I often tell artists don't chase trends, be true to who you are. And, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you know, sometimes people might try to force a sound or force a style because it's trendy, but it doesn't sound organic. It doesn't sound like them. So you know, you always want your music to be an accurate reflection and representation of who you are. You know what I'm saying? So that's, yeah. that's definitely critical. You know, I agree with you a hundred percent. I think that authenticity is one of the main themes that we go over whenever we're having conversations. You know, amongst ourselves basically because there's there's like you know i do talk about creativity a lot when we're talking about sync and one of the things that some people do is they say oh i'm gonna make a song that will sound good for sync and then they look at what the trends generally Mm -hmm. sound like and they will put basically like all the pieces and components in that they hear but then it's sort of like the song was made by ai it's right. not authentic. It doesn't have feeling in it. And one of the right. things that I, I think all of us can do at this point is we can get the feel of a song pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And whether that is flow in a good hip hop song, whether that's a guitar in a rock song, whether that's somebody doing good layering in an electronic song and doing the drops and beats, it doesn't matter what genre. We feel mm-hmm. it. We feel it. And, and, and we have to feel it. Mm-hmm. And the reason why is because we're doing one of two things. One thing that we're doing with music is we're telling stories Mm. and stories have to hit you in the heart. They have to, you have to feel it when it's a TV show, when it's a film, whether it's a comedy, whether it's a drama, whether it's, you know, a a teen romance show, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. That music has to have an element of authenticity in it. Mm -hmm. And then on the side of advertising and brands and, you know, you've got to have, the authenticity because that really is what's demanded by the brand. They don't want to have something that sounds fake. They Mm -hmm. want their audience to feel that they're real and that the sound that they have that's behind their advertising or behind their brand that has authenticity, or at least they want their brand to see seem as having authenticity. Mm -hmm. That music's got to reflect that. So The advice that I give to people is, look, you know, there's nothing wrong with looking at what the trends are right now, but don't Mm -hmm. play into them too hard. And certainly don't play into them to the point that you've put together something sort of like, you know, like it's a Jenga puzzle. Okay, (laughs) now I've got the sync song here. But there are things where you can say to yourself, you know what I should do? Uh, I should put in, I should make sure there are some breaks in the song. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, there are low and high points 
that can make it easier for editors yes. when they're putting a song into an ad or into a uh, into a TV show. Mm -hmm. You can also another piece of advice that I can give is that you should have a song end uh, on a hard note instead of fading out because mm -hmm. that again makes it easier for the editors. Right. Okay, so with that said, that does not mean change your sound. That does not mean, you know, throw in a bunch of oohs and ahs and hand claps and snaps because mm -hmm. that's what you've heard. You know, you, you have to really look at if those things are authentic for you, that's great. But really be authentic as an artist and don't fall into different trends that are going on. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody comes to you and says, hey, I really like this song. I'd really love it if you gave me like, a, can you do a 45 second version where you add an element into it or you mm -hmm. pull these elements out? That's a different conversation. And yeah, of course, go along that. Mm -hmm. But when you're making your music, full songs, the best that you can do, mix and mastered. Don't worry about, you know, whether or not there's a 45 second cut down, a 30 second cut down, I'll be honest with you. We don't really want that at the beginning. We want to have your full authentic effort. And then mm -hmm. we can talk about, we can talk about other things that we can do. So anyway, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an important issue. And that's why I wanted to spend some time on it when you brought it up. Because, of course, of course. You know, we've got, I, I mean, I'm sure you've heard, people where you hear the song and you're like, yeah, they just sort of like put things, like I said, like a Jenga puzzle because yeah. they, there's an element, there's an element, there's an element. And you're like, but where's the love inside of it? Yeah. It's, you know, it's kind of like, like the analogy fast food as opposed to soul food, right? It's yep. like, you no, know, no, nobody wants, you know, the chicken nuggets that, you know, they want some, you know, some home cooked stew, you know, something exactly. That tastes good. You put the right elements and not too much, you know, just put the right ingredients and music is like that, you know? So, you, you know, you, that's, that's dead on, dead on Mark, you know, it's, it's critical, absolutely, man. you know, absolutely. Yeah. And, when, and Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, 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 you go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah, it, it was something. So, you know, it's a couple of other things I, I had, Um, you know, I wanted to ask you because you, you're so accomplished. You know, you got so many um placements and things like that. What are some that like when you when you got those placements, you were very, very proud of those? Like it was like, wow, man, like, you know, to see that, you know, like it kind of blew your mind. Well, you know, what makes me every single one of them make me proud. Mm -hmm. So that's the, you know how it is. It's like you ask yeah. somebody like, what is your best song? And they're like, oh, yeah, like I don't know. I love all my songs, right? <laughs> well, I love all my syncs. I love all my clients. I love everybody I work with. I got to say in terms of my favorites, well, my first is definitely one of my favorites. When I got my first, uh, it was, um, it was for a show. Uh, it was for Lucifer actually. It was wow. for Lucifer. I think it was like, when it was first coming out, uh, mm -hmm. like 2014, 2015. And um, it was actually uh, three um, K-pop songs. And wow. uh, some of you may know uh, the acts. One is called Big Bang. The other one's called To Anyone. Mm -hmm. And um, it, was, uh, it was really, really cool to get that deal done and mm -hmm. to get that, see that music go live. And, you know, basically whenever there's a sync, like the fans for K-pop go mad. So it's really oh, cool to see what was happening there. Right. Um, you know, that, that was really cool. And I've had a lot of other syncs, which some of them have gone under the radar. Some of them have been complicated, but, you know, in, in terms of the paperwork, but uh, the ultimate product has been fun. Uh, let's see. We, uh, did uh, for Blackpink. I'm sure a lot of you know who Blackpink is. Mm -hmm. We did uh, Blackpink's first sync deal, uh, mm -hmm. which was um, uh, for the song Whistle on uh, the big type, I want to say, the big type or the bold type. Uh, please forgive me. It's been a few years, but mm -hmm. that show, that was really interesting. Um, and then outside of that, um, I think our first really big sync, of course, you know, the really like a big deal mm -hmm. um, where 
we had a uh, we've had a few syncs and ads, but we had one that uh, is still live right now. That was um, for an Adobe ad, and it's a very effective use of music. And it's from an artist and producer uh, that uh, I've been advocating for for a decade. So wow. there's persistence again. Yeah. And uh, basically, this is a guy. He's a big producer, uh, very well known in Asia. Uh, produces three top bands, and they sell a lot. And he has his own sort of electronic group. And uh, I've been advocating and pushing for his music for the last decade wow. and uh finally you know his one of his songs that he produced and wrote for somebody else uh was perfect for an ad mm -hmm. and uh we were um we were fortunate enough to be able to put that deal together it was a um interesting process because um for deals like that it's a little bit more complicated than here here's the song for like a 30 second background usage you know there's right. so many more so many more people involved in an ad deal mm -hmm. uh but uh it was fun and it got done and it's been a real it's been a really really interesting ride seeing how this seeing how effective this song is and seeing what's happened for the artist and what's happened for the brand so I'm mm -hmm. proud of that one. And the other one I'm proud of is um, we did something recently, which was a custom work uh, mm -hmm. where we put together it. It was, I won't get too much into the project, but yeah, actually I can get into it because the project is out there. Uh, it was um, to create a song uh, from a top uh, anime music producer and writer, uh, an original song to be used in an ad campaign and also to be a standalone song itself that mm. would go on streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a super interesting experience. It was a sync, but it was really more than that because we had to you know, work with a composer to create the song uh, and then find the best singer to um, be the vocalist. And we went through... It's unfortunate for reasons, you know, nothing to do with the artists themselves. But uh, mm -hmm. we ended up going through uh, two artists before we got to one that we that really resonated with us and with the brand. Um, and you know, the other two artists are great, but uh, it just wasn't. It just wasn't like you had to have the right kind of voice and the right delivery. Mm -hmm. And you know, the one that the one we worked with was perfect. So wow. that one was really cool. And what was great about that and fun about that was that, you know, I was a fan of the vocalist, uh, which was fun to give her. She's an up and coming artist. So it gave her like a, a chance to shine. Yeah. But more than that, what was cool about it was actually bringing this process through to completion. And it was, it was, it got complicated because there were, you know, a lot of big egos involved. Mm. Uh, but at the end of the day, when the product got out there and then we had the song get out there on the streaming networks, it was fantastic to see everything that happened. And then we had an integrated marketing with the producer uh the uh streaming network that commissioned the work with the label that was uh putting the music out on the networks with us mm -hmm. in our small way and uh with the vocalist who has a really big social media following so wow. we were able to do all the things that i talked about you know in terms of strategically connecting the dots from a sync Mm -hmm. with this particular opportunity more than with a lot of others. And um, yeah, I am particularly proud of that one. That one is, that one is actually a, a really, really interesting project. And it was so great to see when it finished up all the things that were done to raise the artist profile and to uh, promote the uh, client successfully. That That's amazing, Mark. And you know what? Something you said was was really really insightful because you spoke about how you had went through two artists to get to this one and those artists were phenomenal in their own right but how you know it had to be right and i think that, that yeah that speaks value because a lot of times like i tell artists all the time kill your ego 
You know, don't allow your ego to ruin an opportunity. So you might write a great song, but you might not necessarily be the right artist for it. You know, so, you know, don't right. have an ego to the point where you're an egomaniac and you have to sing that song. You have to rap that song. It might be someone else that could execute it better than you. Right. You know, maybe yeah. maybe in, in that example, you might be the hammer, but you might need a screwdriver to get the job done. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that's phenomenal what you said, because it showed that you were able to execute it using the right tool, meaning the artist, you know? Oh, absolutely. And I also think that another point that's connected to this that everybody should keep in mind as artists is that, you know, don't be don't don't let uh, naysayers, as you said in the beginning, mm -hmm. or lack of response, which is even more common in our business, mm -hmm. get you down. That is not a reflection on you. It's a reflection on the way that the business works and on all of us mm -hmm. is that, you know, you don't hear from a music supervisor. You've just got to say, okay, or, you know, you submitted music for a search and your music wasn't uh, used. You've got to say, okay, you know, um, that's fine. It didn't work out. I'll move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really have developed like a very thick skin when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. As an artist, I know because I, I was a singer myself and sometimes I still do, but basically you take your, you, you take it, you take it personally a lot of the time mm -hmm. when your music isn't used or you don't see somebody listening to it. You think that it, and, and I understand this. It's like, gosh, you know, I mean, is it me? But it's not you. It's really not you. Mm -hmm. It's the project because they're looking for something. They've got a showrunner in TV or maybe a mm -hmm. social media person or an editor or an agency or brand asking them for certain kinds of music and they're going back and forth. And, you know, what they end up using, it could be you, but if it isn't you, it's not because your music isn't right. It's that your music isn't right for their right now, mm -hmm. for what their project is. Mm -hmm. So you should never get this. You should never get discouraged or disheartened by the nature of this business because it can be harsh. You know, it can be harsh. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. I've spent two years sending out stuff to people and I don't get any syncs. And it's like, yeah, I get it. That's hard. It's yeah. hard, but you can't give up. You can't yeah. give up because there's too many success stories based on people learning lessons, building networks, and being persistent. Man, that that that's powerful, Mark. That's powerful. And and you know one thing we tell artists too is that you know there's no such thing as a loss. We we regard that as experience, right? So if something yeah. doesn't work, that's experience on how to pivot. And I also tell artists don't let the internet discourage you because everybody's not posting their losses. So people will post when they get a placement on a TV show or film, but they won't post about the other 10 that they got turned down for. Right. So, well, you know, of course, always, yeah, you know, right. It's like, people the wins, but they don't really discuss the losses. So you're absolutely right. It's like, don't let things discourage you. Don't let things put you in the funk because everybody's ultimately trying to make it. And you can make it as an artist, but you just got to stay consistent and persistent. You know, that that's key. Definitely. Absolutely. Vitamin, you know, absolutely. And, um, you know, some, something else I wanted to say to you, too, Mark. Um, I, This question, man, I, I know that you you'll be perfect to answer this because a lot of artists that listen to this podcast all over the world, they ask us a lot of times. They say there's a lot of sync libraries out there with non-exclusive deals, exclusive deals. And a lot of artists, sometimes they'll sign to a lot of different libraries that have um, non-exclusive deals. Do you think at some point, sometimes artists may over leverage themselves if they sign to too many licensing companies? Or do you think that maybe it's not a bad thing? Like, what's your take on that? Okay, well, my take on it is being, I, as an artist, I would want to be non-exclusive versus exclusive but I wouldn't want to go too crazy and sign with 10 different libraries or 10 different sync agencies. And I've seen people do that. And let me break this down for you as to the good and bad points. Now, the good point of exclusivity is that 
in theory, you've got one person really working hard for you. And that person is a person it has an incentive to really work hard for you ex- exclusively. So that's great. However, I can say that a lot of people that do exclusive deals, they don't have, let's say, for example, the same connections that I do internationally or in the advertising industry. So you're selling yourself short by going and putting all of your songs in with one person or mm-hmm. one company. You're better off saying strategically, like, where do I want to go? Where do I want my music to go? Who do I want to connect to? If you want to connect to ads and brands, maybe you work with this group or this mm-hmm. guy or this woman. If you want to do TV and film, you've heard about a good sync agency or a good library. Let me put my music there. Mm. And then you can say internationally, you know what? I want to do more stuff in Asia. Who's a good sync agent that's based in Asia? Or Mm. who's a good sync agent for the Indian market? If you do an exclusive deal, you can't really do that. So, Mm. you know, I say, I always say go for non-exclusives, but go strategic. Um, One thing that some people I know do is if they have a lot of songs, They'll do exclusive deals for a few songs with each person. Now, Mm. I don't think that's a good approach at all. And I'll tell you why. Because nobody knows what songs are going to be used. They don't know what songs are going to be a hit. If you told me four years ago that the biggest sync that I had was the song that was used, I would say, really? That was sort of (laughs) like my tier three yeah. You know, not in a bad way, but it's like it yeah. wasn't anything I was actively promoting. Mm-hmm. It came out because I was asked, hey, do you have anything like this? But it wasn't something like if you had asked me, I would have said, these are the songs that I think are going to hit. Mm-hmm. But if you just say, oh, well, that's just the song that's not that not as important. You don't know what's important. That's and true. not and neither does this think agent or this library they don't know they don't know they can know to a degree oh that song sounds good it sounds like stuff that this music supervisor likes and uses Mm -hmm. but if you don't give them the maximum capability to bring your catalog out into the world you're gonna suffer so i wouldn't do exclusive deals for three songs here four songs here do your whole catalog do it with a few people on a strategic level. Do your research into these people. Look at mm-hmm. what their deals are. And that's another mm-hmm. thing. I know we've only got an hour. Mm-hmm. But another thing is look at the kinds of deals that they do. It's super important to check mm-hmm. that out. Now, my deals, I'll tell you, they're one-year non-exclusive deals. We take a third of the upfront. We don't take any royalties. Mm-hmm. That's a decent deal. That's a decent deal. Some people will take less. Some people will take up to half. I would say to you, if somebody asks you for more than half, really question, you know, like, why is it that this person's getting more than me? Mm -hmm. You know, question that because that doesn't sound right. And usually it's not. The Mm -hmm. other thing is your publishing share and your writer's share of your royalties. Now, a sync agent like me, Most of us don't take the royalty share. The only time I would think about taking a royalty share is if I actually produce, if I actually had a role in the production, whether I put money up or whether I wrote part of it, whatever it was. If I had a, if I had some level of involvement in the actual production, of course I would want a royalty. But for what I do, no, I'm brokering a deal and Mm -hmm. I get paid on that deal. I shouldn't get paid for the next 10 years. That's, Mm. that's my philosophy. Mm. And, but I see that there are some sync agents out there who will ask for a lot of the upfront and they'll ask for your publishing or Mm. they'll ask. And, and I've even seen some asking for your writer's share, which I, I, Oh my God. But anyway, Uh, it's nuts. Yeah. One more thing though. Libraries work on a different model than sync agents. So if a library says, Hey, I want your publishing share. You keep your writer share. Those deals are standard. So I don't have anything to say about that. But mm-hmm. when a sync agent comes to you, a sync agent should be making money from the upfront part and not the back end. Uh, and certainly they shouldn't be asking you for anything more than 50%. Mm. 
I agree. I agree 100 percent, Mark. Everything you said was spot on, you know, and to your point, mm -hmm. I think a lot of it is R&D, like research and development. Yeah. You know? and, and Google is your, your perfect partner in crime when it comes to research and development. You know, I tell artists all the time, look up these companies. Don't just sign blindly. Do your due diligence. Look at what type of deals are out there. Even look through the artist roster. Right. Click on that artist tab and go to their social media profiles. See if they post about getting placements. How many placements are they getting? You know, like the proof is in right. the pudding, right? You yeah. know, if you got 10 artists on this uh, sync company, I'm going to go through every artist. I want to see their social media. I want to see their Instagram. I want to see what they're posting, how often they're getting placements. Because a lot of times that can be a good barometer for what may come if you sign on to this roster, you know? Yep. So I couldn't know. agree with you more. I couldn't yeah. agree with you more. That is it. That is it a really good point you know do your research and also research how the industry works like figure out the nuts and bolts part of it as much as you can mm -hmm. because i know this is not what you signed up for when you became a musician right i mean oh, yeah. you just didn't sign up didn't sign up to do paperwork didn't yeah. sign up to learn about metadata i get it but you at very least even if you sign with a sync agent you at the very least need to know what these things are you need to be educated even if you're not in, even if you're not executing on all the back end stuff you need mm -hmm. to know what a deal is you need to know how the deals work because ultimately what you want is either you can be like some of my friends that are diy and they do really great stuff and they built a business that they are really successful with and they do it all. They make the music. They put the music out. They get the music synced. They build their networks. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that, you can. But if you don't, and I think that's most people, and you find a sync agency or a library, you're going to want to have a dialogue with that mm -hmm. person, with that agency, with that company. You don't just want to say, oh, here's my music. You know, oh, you want to be able to be informed and say like hey you know i really like this show over here i researched the music supervisors like social media and checked out some of what they're listening to do you think it would be a good idea if we sent them a few songs or sent them some music mm -hmm. um you got to have that kind of a dialogue with a um with a sync agency or with a library and you know anybody who doesn't want to have that dialogue with you uh, and, you know, they're not going to talk to you every day because they're busy. But, you know, on, it's, when they send an email, they should be going back and forth with you. Or when you do get a call with them, they should be engaged with you and not just be like, oh, I know what my job is. I don't need your help. You know, some people are like that. But really, you want to think of it as a partnership, like, you know, because that's what's going to that's what's going to help you. And it's going to help the people you work with, ultimately. So without a doubt, man, that that's on that's on point, Mark. And we we slight, we got slightly under 10 minutes left here. Yeah. But I, I had uh, two more questions for you. OK, um, and I'll keep it short. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. We look, we vibing, bro. <laughs> it's all good. All, okay. all the gems, a lot of gems you dropping, man. So I wanted to ask you. Um, so. I'm big on mantras, right? Like I have a couple like persistence, wisdom, resistance. I also love collaboration is greater than competition. So building with like-minded people that share similar values, similar core interests in order to progress. So what would you say throughout all these years? What is a mantra of yours that keeps you motivated, keeps you going throughout these years? Oh gosh, there's so many, there's so many things, you know, so many different, so many different little catchphrases I've come up with over the years, you know, um, polite persistence is one of them. I got to give Diddy credit on that one because he said that. And I, I, I produced an event. This is outside of the sync world. I produced the first Re revolt event, um, Back in what was it, 2014? Um, I was, wow. you know, one of the main people on the production team you know, running the uh, stage. I was mm -hmm. so basically, you know, one of the things that he said was be politely persistent, and I was like, yes, polite persistence. That is a key, and that That's that great. is something you need to do in the world of um, in the world of sync, mm -hmm. and. The other one, and you got to forgive me for this because you'll know where I got this from, because uh, I, I took a phrase that everybody knows and I turned it around and I you said, it. Yes, 
<laughs> if the song doesn't fit, then don't submit. Hey, so, hey okay, okay. <laughs> All right, if it doesn't fit, you must you, quit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got it. Shout out to Johnny Cocker. Rest in peace. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, you take from the best, right? <laughs> so anyway, the man was a master of his craft. Yeah, so, yeah he was a wordsmith. That's, that's a fact. Yeah. yeah. So, when I, so when I was thinking of it, I'm like, yeah, if, if the song doesn't fit, then don't submit. And what I mean by that mm-hmm. is that, you know, if somebody comes to you with a brief and they're, or they come to you and they ask you for music, think to yourself, does this song fit what they're asking for? Or should I just say, thank you, but let's do, let's like go to the next time. You should always say, thank you. Go to the next time. If you don't have what they're looking for, because I can guarantee you from firsthand experience, nothing gets us more hot and bothered than when we ask for something and we get something else. Because again, you have to think we are busy people and we're managing our time and we want to deal with trusted sources and we want you to be a trusted source. So when you have that shot, make that shot count. And if you don't have that shot and honestly say to us, you know, I don't have it this time, people are going to respect that and they're going to come back to you. But here's a case in point. Like when I, when I've sent out briefs, uh, I was music supervising a film a few years ago, and I sent out a brief looking for um, Italian music from the 50s. Mm. I got Italian disco from the 70s. I got Italian electronic music from the 80s. I got some classical music done by an Italian orchestra. I'm like, what are you guys doing? How much more clear could I be? Oh my God. You know, it wasn't like, you know, a lot of the time when I get a request from somebody, it's okay because I I do this every day. My friends will go to me, Hey Mark, listen, do you got me blank? That's it. It'll be one sentence and I'll be like, okay, well how much money you got? And then we'll go back and forth and I'll put a picture together. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time, the opportunities that you're going to get are not going to be that kind of thing where it's just like, I know somebody already but when you're getting something and it's the first time, just ask yourself like, hey, you know, that Italian song that you have, is it going to work for the 50s or is it yeah. from 1982? You know, yeah. people got to ask that question because the surest way to have a music supervisor go, oh, God, I can't deal with this person. You know, so just, you know, if the song doesn't fit, don't submit. That's, that's the one thing I'll say. <laughs> that's that's a major key. And, and like you said, too. Your reputation precedes you, so you don't want to be known as that artist that just submits songs that don't fit because next time your song hits that inbox, they're automatically going to be like, nah, I'm not wasting time on this. Exactly, exactly. And you don't want that to be the reason that your song doesn't get used. You know, like you want your song to get into the, you know, into like the top list of songs Mm -hmm. because basically it's like when we put out something, like we just, we're in the middle of doing this big thing with uh, 55 different music production companies and ad agencies in Europe. We're basically, wow. we've opened it up and it's open. It's actually open until Monday. Uh, so it's going to be open, I think, when this goes live, maybe. Oh, yeah. uh, but good. So basically, I'll follow up with you and give you a link. But the whole thing is with this one is that uh, we have 55 people in the ad industry in Europe who are looking for music for their future campaigns, for evaluating. And we've asked people to send in three songs each. Now we've got, oh, let's see, we've got about 3,000 songs right now. But that's okay because we've got, because we're dealing with a lot of people and big agencies, then there's going to be a lot of potential for the people that have submitted. Mm -hmm. Um, But you know, when we ask for something, uh, it can be something as broad as that. And when you get an opportunity like that, throw your best stuff at it, just general best stuff at it. But when somebody comes to you with something specific, you got to be specific. So that's, you know, that at the end of the day is, you know, something that I think everybody should look at in terms of, you know, what the opportunity is and how to take advantage of it. 
I, um, I agree, one hundred ten percent, Mark. If Mark, and for that, for that opportunity, how can artists submit for that? Artists that are listening to this, like, how do they submit for that opportunity? Okay, well, I am going to give you a link that you can post for everybody. Okay. Um, let me just see here. I, I'll give it to you right here, and uh, so okay. so you have it. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I have I have Dawn included when she uh does the. the oh, that'll be perfect. Description. Yeah. Okay, now I've got to go into my emails, and I have so many emails going back and forth on this thing internally. Because you can imagine, there's a lot of organization with this, with of so course, many, of uh, so many people. All right, yeah. so let me see here. Ah, there it is. Ad sync listening session. Here you go. And yeah, I couldn't be more excited about this. This is such a great initiative. We're doing Sounds it. Sounds amazing. amazing. Yeah, Mark. it's the. Um, Production, uh, the Association of Music Production for Ads, uh, alongside a technology company we work with called Bridge Audio, okay. and uh, two other companies that are working with us, uh, um, Audio Fanzine and Bass for Music are the two other companies working with us on this. Okay. So just go ahead. You've got until end of day. September, or no, September, what am I saying? November 7th, November end of day, 7th. November 7th. Yeah. November 7th, okay. Right. And then what we're going to do is on the 14th, we're going to have an hour and a half uh, conversation where we're bringing on some mu a couple of music supervisors from the agencies, one from an agency here, um, and uh, the people from Bridge Audio and me. And we're going to talk about me, how music and advertising works and what, and in general, what we thought of the music that we received. And then we're going to very quickly play five songs or pieces of five songs and talk about why we thought these were among the best songs that we got. That That's amazing, Mark. You know, and I, I just... I have so much respect for you because of what you do for artists. You know, like that's Thank amazing, you. man. You know, it's like it's, you know, the music business can be very tough. And unfortunately, sometimes it can be a bit predatory too, you know. So the fact that, you know, there's people like yeah. yourself and others that make an effort to actually help musicians, that's amazing, man. Well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, look, I see I, there's always going to be misinformation out there. There's always going to be. Like we could get so deep into all of the all of the things that I like to try to uh, clarify for people, uh, but at the end of the day, there's a there there's a lot of fog around sync, and it's not foggy. It's really not foggy. It is not alchemy. Like some, you know, some music supervisors like to act like you know they're a wizard on uh, in a Harry Potter film or in a Harry Potter book with yeah. a cauldron going like this and dropping in different things and creating magical gold. It's like, no, there's a process. There's a mm -hmm. process on their side and there's a process on our side. And if you understand what that process is and what goes into it, that understanding can translate into a greater degree of success for you. Mm -hmm. And it will help you stay away from the predatory people out there. Mm -hmm. It will help you to realize if you get that, if you gain that knowledge, if you go out there and, you know, talk to people, go to events, listen to podcasts like this, you will start to build a picture of what's real and what's not real. Mm -hmm. And that education will take you to a place where you will be in the group of people that are, position for success in this business. And once you start to work in this business and your music gets known, things build. People get oh, to yeah. know you. They get to know your music. You know, I would, you know, if somebody says to me, hey, Mark, you know, I need this kind of music, this kind of singer, I'll go like, oh, yeah, this is my friend over here. She just did this work with a friend of mine. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. She will be on time. She will be on point. And she's got a great voice and she takes direction. You know, all the things mm -hmm. that we want. So, you know, it, it takes time to break through. But mm -hmm. once you break through, capitalizing on that breakthrough, you know, and building on that success is something you can definitely do.
Absolutely. And like you said, Mark, you know, it's all about relationships. Your network is your net worth. Having that right network of people like my oh, I love people, that. Yep. You know, you need that because that helps you grow. You know, growing up, my grandmother, she had a saying, she said, you know, you hang around five broke people, you're going to be the six. So, you know, <laughs> you know, when you, when you, well, hang around, she you had know, some wisdom there, didn't yeah, she? You know, and people, <laughs> you know, it's not just limited to money, right? People can be broke emotionally. People can be broke mentally. People can be broke yeah. spiritually and they can drag you down. So you got to be around like-minded people, you know? So that's, you know, all, all points, you know, all points taken, man. We appreciate all the knowledge, Mark. And Absolutely. for any artists that want, want to connect with you, um, you know, or submit music to your company or, or you know, they want to be a part of the Sync Summit, like how how can they they connect with the, the GOAT, the legend? Mark? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Well, listen, here's how you do it. It's really simple. Uh, Mark at SyncSummit.com. That's S-Y-N-C Summit.com. SyncSummit.com. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my email. I try to answer everybody even though I get all those emails, um, put in the subject that you're coming to me from sync, sync music Mondays. And I'll make sure I put you at the top of my uh, list. And, go. um, you know, if you have questions on anything, I'll be happy to answer, or you can just go to our, you could start off as well by going to our website at sync And you can see all the resources that are there that are free because there are a lot of them. Or if you want to come to one of our events, or if you want to come to one of our courses, or the mentoring program that I do with um, music supervisor Chris Molaire, it's all there. You can just learn about everything that we do. And hey, if you want to come to our website and just totally mine it and not spend a penny, I'm cool with that. You know, it, wow. that's cool. We've got we've got that there for you, whether you're. You know, whether you're coming in and you're just like, I just want to learn and I'll take what I can from this. I'm totally cool with that because, you know, there being a musician in this business is hard. And I want to see everybody get as much information as they possibly can so that they can have that better picture and be able to move forward and mm -hmm. be able to position themselves for success and sync. That, that's amazing, Mark. That's amazing. And and let me ask you, Mark, is your company on uh, Instagram as well? Like, do you? Or, yes. Or yourself, are you on Instagram as well? Like, what, what are the handles? Yes, I am. You can follow. Yeah, it's Sync Summit. Uh, here, it's Sync Summit dot or Sync Summit IG. Okay. Yeah, I have Dawn put put those links down there. There as well. you go. Yeah. That's so. Sync Summit IG, and then we have a Facebook group with like sixty five hundred people on it. So okay. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you that because okay. that's something you should for sure, for sure be a part of. Definitely. Um, because it's filled with a great community and lots of free information. So I'm gonna awesome. give you that group right there. Awesome. Give me just a second to pull it up. Okay. Gotcha. Good. All right. There we cool. have it. There we have it. Well, look, y'all, y'all seen it. This, this has been phenomenal. It's been amazing. A lot of gems, a lot of information. Mark, Thank you. You know, he, he laid out the blueprint for y'all. So, you know, got to take the notes out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for look, the opportunity of coming on with you. Look, this any, anytime, Mark. Look, I'm I'm glad we finally were able to make it happen, man. I know yeah, we were going back and too. forth. We were going back and forth for a little while, but here we are. Yeah. Look, man, look, that's that's it, man. We appreciate you, brother. Thank you for your time. And uh and yeah, this, I appreciate this you be, too, man. Yeah, Thanks. brother. This, this will be rocking on Monday. So, you know, we'll be awesome, time, man. My All back. right, cool. And I'll get it out to I'll get it out to my world too. So we make sure we get everybody getting into here. We here. We here, my brother. Okay, good. All, All right. right. I'll see, see you later. All right. Good brother. weekend. Okay, man. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.